Hi everyone. We're going to keep talking about variables in this lesson. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, strings. We're going to talk about um, our primitive data types like variables and, or sorry, um, numbers and strings and booleans um, acting like objects. And uh, we're going to look at you know, some functions we can run on our numbers and strings in order to to manipulate the data. Um, I've left out a bunch of you know the HTML tags, the doc type, and things like that, just in case we need the space. But obviously, you should have you know the correct document structure here. But we'll just leave it out for now because we're not actually building a website right now. We're just trying to do some things with JavaScript. So I'm going to post some. Um, some variables in here. So let's just take a look at them. Uh, this backslash n is called the new line character. We have another one here. Uh, we have a break tag here, just a regular HTML break, and uh, some other stuff here. Okay, let's let's look at it one by one. Okay, so here I'm writing out the first variable, and then just a break tag, just so things are going to be clear here so it's not all ending up on one line um, you know each variable is going to the next line so that's why I have a break tag here um, we haven't looked at concatenation yet so this is a good chance to talk about that um, this is called the concatenation operator so what it does is I have two different types of data here I have a variable here and I have some regular string tags here um, but we want what I want is I want it to output this variable and then I want it to put the string text after. That's gonna that's gonna enable us to for the next code we put it's gonna go to the next line and the next line so it's not all on one line. So uh, we can just see well let's see what happens here. Okay, so if I if I left this out with no concatenation operator here, let's see what happens. Okay, we get an error, and let's see what it says actually. Unexpected token. Um, anyways, it knows this is a variable, but it doesn't know what this is. Okay, but if we tell it that it's a string, so this just means to connect something. We're connecting two different um, pieces of data. Okay, now it knows this is a variable, and this is some string text that we want to output after our variable. We paste it here, and that's fine. So um, back to the new line character. So what we wanted this to do for us, what this is designed to do, is to you know output this, and then once it gets to the new line character, it's going to kick this part down to the next line. Okay. But we saw that this this didn't work. Um, so you know JavaScript can run in different environments. It can be used in the browser. Um, it can also be used um, in in other places, not in the browser. Um, so, but what we can see is this didn't work in the browser. So our goal of knocking this down to the next line didn't work this way, okay? And it just, uh, it actually just hid this new line character. It didn't even come out as a string. So that didn't do what we wanted it to. Um, let's let's output our next variable. So here, um, what I did was, well, I used the concatenator again here, and um, actually it wasn't even necessary in this context, but what we can see is same thing happened. Um, this didn't go to the next line, and also this was hidden again. We, we can't even see it here. Um, we can actually just remove this here. We can try like this to see if that will you know, knock this part down to the next line. And there's no difference, okay? So that didn't work either. All right, let's let's output our third variable. Okay, so now we got what we wanted, and we got that from the break tag. So in a browser, if you want to, you know, push one piece of text to the next line, we should use the break tag. And you can write it like this, or you can also write it like this with a space in the middle but this will work just fine. Okay, so just remember, making a new line in the browser, use the break tag. Okay, um, let's do one more. So in this last one, what are we trying to do here? Well, what I want to output here is I want to output one backslash, okay? So why did I need to put two backslashes here? 
Okay, so here I got the desired output. I got one backslash. And the reason I needed to, to put two backslashes here is because the first backslash is escaping the second backslash. Okay, if I left that one out, this won't work because this is denoting the beginning of the string and we're coming down here and this one is, remember we talked about escaping single quotation marks before. Now this is escaping this one, this is being taken literally and this string is looking for the end of the string so it should have you know, a, a single quotation to end it but this isn't ending it now because it's being taken literally because this backslash is escaping it and if we try to run this we get an error. Okay, Let's see what it says. It says unexpected token illegal. Okay, uh, I think they should make those a little bit easier to understand but anyways. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to escape the backslash. So now this backslash is being taken literally which is what we want and this is the end of the string and this in this semicolon you know it ends the string. Let's try to run that and that runs just fine and I get my own backslash. So sometimes uh, you will need to use a backslash in order to escape another backslash. Okay. Um, let's delete all of this. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is um, we talked before about how numbers and strings and booleans were primitive data types in JavaScript. Um, but these primitive data types, they can also act like objects. And we'll talk more about objects later, but um, objects have um, methods, which are um, some functions we can run on the data in order to ma manipulate the, the data in different ways. We can do things to the string, we can do things to uh, the numbers. Um, so let's just let's look at some examples of that. So we have a regular string here. And what I want to do is I don't just want to output the string. I want to I want it to tell me its length. So I want to know how many characters are in this string. So in order to do that, I'm going to write out the string and then I'm going to use this dot operator here in order to um, access a property of, of this string. Okay, so objects have uh, methods and properties. Okay, so property is just you know like some information about the string. So here the information we're getting is the length, which is how many characters are in here. And let's see what happens. Okay, 16. So we we know that this string has 16 characters in it. So um, actually. Strings in JavaScript are they are still primitive data types, but they act like objects because we can you know run you know method we can run methods on them we can access their properties and that's because in, in the background in JavaScript um, what it's doing is it um, it's creating a, a wrapper class for our for our string so the ra the cl the wrapper class it, it contains the primitive data in it but it also contains a whole bunch of um, other information about it. It contains properties and, and methods um, for the string that, that we can access to find find out information like this, like how many characters are in it. Um, let's put, let's do some more things to our string. So in this next variable I called it first first char and we have our variable here and here we have um, a method. We have a function that we're running on this string and we want to know what is the character at zero okay so strings um, when we're counting the characters they start at zero so this is character zero this is character one this is character two and so on until the end of the string so when we're counting it doesn't start at one it starts at zero so what is what is the first character that's what we want to know here Let's just paste some text in here. Okay, so now we're going to write out our first char variable t, okay, which is that is the first one. If we put one in here, we're not going to get the first character, we're going to get the second character. So this is the same thing with arrays in JavaScript. They, they start at zero, not, um, let's just change this back 
not at one. And let's do one more. Let's find out the last character. This one's a little bit more complicated. So here in this variable, last char, we're going string and we're we're checking the character at uh, the string's length minus one. Okay, so like in this example, we saw we, we saw length already. The length of this string is the length of the string is we'll just write it right here, it's sixteen. Okay? But remember when we were checking the characters, zero is the first one. So this is zero and the last character is fifteen, right? If we start if we're counting off sixteen times and we start from the first one, we start zero. When we get to here, this is the fifteenth character. Okay, so that's why we have to do this minus one here. We can, uh, we can, like, we can try it without this minus one. So string dot length. So we're check checking the character at the sixteenth position. We can see um, how that works out for us. And we got nothing. Okay, did we get an error? No, we didn't. Okay, but basically it didn't work because. There is none. This str dot length. This is evaluating to 16. Okay, but because we count from zero, the characters only go from zero, one, two, all the way to 15. There is nothing at 16. Okay, but if we go str dot length minus one, we get the g. Okay, which is which is the last character. So str dot length minus one. Take this out. Um, numbers are similar, so remember numbers are primitive data type, but they also have their wrapper classes uh, made by JavaScript. They where they have properties and they have functions. We can run on them. Um, we just have a we have a simple variable here. This is a float variable. I could have called this anything. Doesn't matter. One two three dot four five. Okay, so it's a decimal value or float, and let's try to do some things to to this variable. So here we're writing out the float, but we are we're doing something to it. We're using this uh, we're using this to fixed method on the float, and we're putting and this is taking one argument, which is we're giving it zero. And let's see what that does. Okay, so we just got one, two, three, 123. So what happened here was um, this is basically saying how many um, how many digits do you want after this point right here? Okay, what what do you want to round it off to? So this shows that we don't want any decimals. So that means there needs to be some rounding that occurs here. Okay, so it's looking at this one, two, three, point four. Does that round off to 124 or 123? It rounds off to 123. That's why we got this output here. If we change this to a 5 though, now it's 124. So it's performing this rounding for us um, just to find you know, which one it's closer to. Put that back to 4. So we can, we can change this. We could change it to 3. So we want three decimals after uh, the point here. Okay, so that's what we're getting. We're getting three, and now it's it's still performing the rounding again. Here it's looking at point four, five, six. It knows we want this. Okay, should this be a six or a seven? Well, it goes to the next character seven. So it's rounding. It's rounding up to one hundred twenty-three point four five seven. Okay, uh, that's all I want to talk about this lesson, and see you in the next one.